Hey, what's up guys? It's Scott with Everyday Home Repair. So today I'm gonna to walk you through start to finish on a project where I'm extending out a downspout and a sump pump through a drain pipe away from my house. Now specifically, I'll be using a solid single walled corrugated pipe at four inches in diameter. Now why I'm going with corrugated is I'm only gonna have about eight to 12 inches of soil on top of this pipe. So it's well above what's called the freeze line in my area. So there's gonna be some expansion and contraction of the ground. Now I wanna make sure the pipe has some flexibility and doesn't fail or crack over time. Because one of the main failure points of these drain pipes is when you get some type of crack, whether that's two PVC pipes coming together and that fails over time, or the ground heaves and cracks the pipe then water starts coming out and small little roots find their way into the pipe and there's a water source so they expand and then you have a ball of roots in the pipe blocking everything. Super common failure point. So I like the corrugated, it's going to have flexibility and I'm also going to be able to do one solid line 36 foot off to my discharge. So that's why I went with it. But if you're in the southern states, if you don't really have a freeze line, Maybe you go with the PVC and it's a better option. But since this video is probably gonna be a little longer, you can look down in the timeline and it will be broken up into chapters just in case there's only a few things in the overall project that you need. You can kind of look at each chapter and see which one you need for your specific project and save a little time. But first up, we'll jump out and take a look at the project so you can see how it relates to what you're facing. So here's the project. And you can see the downspout right there, which we want to extend out 36 feet to this far stake next to the sidewalk. But if we also look under the deck, you will see the two inch PVC pipe, which is a pump, sump pump discharge that I also want to branch in with the downspout. I will remove that bush there to make sure I don't have a bunch of roots trying to work against the intersections, which will be right below that surface. So this downspout and the sump pump was temporarily routed away from the house after my sump pump original line clogged, but it's just dumping in the yard and it's just making a mess. So for the new pipe, I am taking the little elevation change I have, which is about 12 inches of drop between the start and finish to help calculate my slope and also how deep to dig the trench. So you saw the level line out there in the yard and that's a critical part of the project because that's what you're gonna be doing your reference measurements from to make sure your trench is the proper depth to get the slope that you want and just overall positioned in the ground where you want it. Now, if you need a little help on how to set that up and how to tie those knots and just get that line set up if you've never done it before, there's a link right here. It'll dive deeper into that and kind of walk you through the full process. But here on the whiteboard, I have all the calculations I did to know exactly how deep below the ground surface do I need to dig to get the corrugated pipe at the proper slope. So first off, I'm gonna just do an overview here, running through my dimensions and what you'll see me measuring to as I dig out the trench. But again, if you wanna dive deeper into how to calculate slope by using your rise over your run, and also how to take measurement points from that level line here represented by the green line, again, there's a separate video that'll dive deeper into it, but I'll go through a high level here. And also there was some small changes and adjustments I made since the video. So originally what I was shooting for was a slope of 1.25% for the corrugated. Also knowing that my total distance was 36 feet, converted into inches, it's 432 inches, I'll, I was able to calculate how much elevation change I need from the start of the corrugated pipe to the end across that 36 feet represented here. And that turned out to be 5.4 inches. So I just rounded up to a six inches of elevation change. Now I took multiple points throughout my line. So here's the house with the downspout. And I said from this point, from the level line, it was 12 inches to the ground surface. Then I took nine foot away from that, then 18 foot, then 27 foot, and finally at the end, which is 36 feet. And I said, what's the distance to the ground? So you see my ground actually comes up two inches. And that's why between the level line and the ground surface, it's only 10 inches. 
then it goes back to the same level, and then it starts to dive down, you can see by the larger measurements between the ground surface and the level line. Now I took that into account and I said, I'm gonna start by digging my trench here at 14 inches. That was gonna give me 10 inches of ground above my four inch corrugated pipe. Then at each point, I took that 14 inches, I added on the slope that I needed, which was 1.5 inches, and then also accommodated for the change in the ground, which here it went up two inches, so I need to add another two inches. So I knew I needed to dig here 17.5 inches down to get that nice 1.25 or a little over 1.25% slope. Then I just calculated that out for each one and then I know, okay, now I can take down my level line, I can start digging and I know I need to be, the trench needs to be 14 inches deep here, 17 and a half inches deep here, 17 and so on till the end. Now since then, since I had put that video on the deep dive of how to calculate this, out, I did get feedback that the slope was not quite aggressive enough to make sure the corrugated pipe had the water velocity to do the self-cleaning and pushing out the debris. So without changing my plans a ton, I did adjust it slightly. So what I did, instead of 14 inches at the start, I'm gonna go 10 inches at the start. So that's only gonna give me six inches of ground above my pipe at the start, which is pretty shallow, but again, that's at the start. And then I did the same calculations here, taking 10 inches, adding the two additional inches of ground because the ground goes up there, and then adding a more aggressive slope of eight total inches calculated here, which will give me, instead of 1.25%, it gives me 1.85%. So more aggressive and hopefully gets that velocity up in the corrugated pipe. So instead of 1.5 inches, I'm gonna add two inches and that gives me 14 inches dig depth here, opposed to my original, which was 17 and a half. And then I just did that same calculation out. So I need to dig 14 here, which is my second point at 18 feet away from the wall. 13 inches here, which is gonna be 27 feet away from the wall. And then all the way at the end, I'm gonna just be six inches down, which is good because then that is gonna line up here to my pop-up emitter, which only needs six inches of depth. So the pop-up is laying right on the ground. So that all works out. And these are the measurements I'm going to. Remember, check out that video, link in the description if you need to dive deeper on calculating slope, and then just also using that level line to know exactly what your trench depth needs to be. So without further ado, it is time to go do a little sweating and dig that trench.
so I want to review quickly what tools I'm using that came in handy. Although I use a multitude of different tools, these are kind of your go-tos that are going to get the job done. First up, big old pick, which can help with like the bush that I removed. Or if your soil is really compacted, this can really help work it loose and get it out of the trench. Next up, I used a heavy duty spade. So unlike your more narrow, longer spade, this is more reinforced. Now it's made by Lowe's, it's a cobalt brand, and it's reinforced steel opposed to wood, and then also just the, the steel itself is a thicker gauge. So you can really dig the side of your trenches and use leverage without bending your shovel. Something else that will be super handy if you have hard pack is one of these post hole diggers. They're about a 15 pound spike, so it can really help dig up the bottom of that trench and you can work it loose to get the material out. Then once I have everything loose, I'm really working the grade, I do have just a small little rake that can get down and rake the bottom and smooth out the bottom of the trench. To help actually measure the trench, I used one of my stakes and then I just put my critical measurements of 6 inches, 10 inches, 13 inches, and 14 inches, which were the measurements I needed at my different checkpoints. So that can help save some time to not keep getting your tape measure out and making your measurements. And then last up, but probably the most handy, is an actual trench shovel. It's the first time I've used one and it was very handy smoothing out the bottom of the trench and getting to grade. So I highly recommend getting one of these. I think it'll make your life easier. So if you need any more information on those tools, just look down in the description. I'll have links for all the different tools used. And now, i got to finish up this trench. closer up demo of that trench shovel just in case you don't have one it might be worth the investment because it does make the job much quicker and here is a look at the final product I have my grade all set there is my phone utility and we'll freeze that right there is a cut coax cable for my cable internet not a huge deal since I did install Starlink a couple of weeks back and that is my internet now, but I still do need to call the utility to shut that off so it doesn't affect the neighbors. And then going to six inches at the end, which is where the pop-up will be. So now we're all ready to connect everything together. In the start off, I need to convert the two inch PVC from my sump pump coming out of the house and go into that that coupling, but then convert that out to my four inch corrugated. So to do that, I'm gonna start off with PVC, just a two inch schedule 40 PVC, and make an elbow with two small extensions coming off each side. One will go into the rubber coupling that's going in the house, and then one will go and expand out to a four inch PVC. So now I have into four inch PVC. So I'll take a small five inch long section of four inch PVC. And now I'm ready to use the coupling that will convert from four inch PVC to four inch corrugated. Make sure you use that exact type of coupling because it has a nice lip that will hold the four inch corrugated pipe into the fitting. And then there's the finished product. So now we're ready to start getting the drain pipe laid out and then all my Y's connected up. So first up, I'm just connecting the outlet of the Y to the 36 foot run of the corrugated and then putting my downspout in place. 
I do wrap each of the connections with the corrugated tape, kind of similar to electrical tape, just to make sure everything's watertight. Now, I do have that Y going into the downspout. That is going to be for a clean out. So I will cap that, but I'll be able to stick a guarded hose down there if I need to flush things out. So now connecting up the sump pump, this is a live sump pump, so it is pumping out probably about every five minutes. I'll cut off the corrugated to the length I need. And then I'll try to attach this coupling. I have a little bit of a hard time and I don't want to damage the corrugated. So what I did is I went ahead and took a heat gun, I warmed up the coupling, brought it back, and then it was much easier to get into the corrugated and get that lip really attached around the ribs of the corrugated pipe. Once that was done, then I was able to tighten up the band clamp and everything now is secure. But to get this to line up with that company coming out of the house, I do need to move a little dirt just so I can change the angle of the corrugated pipe coming up to that adapter. So I'm just moving some dirt next to the wall of the house. And then I can shift over that corrugated and now get the adapter secured into the coupling. Now moving to the other end with everything connected up by the house, now I'm going to connect up this elbow and then install the pop-up emitter. So I'll tape that elbow, but make sure that we pull is open and pointed down, which will help drain out that elbow with any sitting water. And then I want to align this where it's just below the grade so I can mow over this and not chop that pop-up emitter. So I'll backfill in some dirt, compact it down a little bit. Now you'll be working back and forth to get everything to line up. And then I'll also cut that sod so I have a little bit of a hole for the 90 degree to come out of. But I would leave everything when you put the sod back in a little bit high because especially if you're not compacting down very well like I am, things are going to settle out. Once moisture gets in there, over time, things will settle back down. So now I can test it out and I see that the water comes out from a sump pump cycle and kind of drains off. You can see the wet sidewalk back there and drains away from the house. Now this is where the plastic really pays off as you start to fill in the trench you can keep consolidating your pile easily and then just trimming off the extra plastic and disposing of that making cleanup a breeze. So that's it, the project is complete and now you can see the sump pump and downspout coming together there. All the fill is back in, the sod is back in place. I left the sod high because I did not compact the soil very much so I'm going to water that down and let that settle back into ground level. But let me know what you guys think, let me know what questions you have or even what I did wrong that you guys think should be different. I'll collect any of that information, I'll put it in a pinned comment at the top of the comment section for you to reference. And if you haven't already subscribed to the channel, jump down there, click the subscribe button as we have multiple videos coming out per week to help you with your repairs around the house. And we'll catch you on the next one.